The CM Storm SF-17 uses a massive 18cm fan to cool your gaming notebook, and it adds a 4-port USB hub. Click now to learn more. So you guys have been asking me for a studio tour since forever ago. I'm finally doing it. This is the Linus Media Group Studio. This is behind the scenes. This is where all of the videos we make, I was going to say where all your favorite videos, except they're probably not your favorites, but this is where all the videos we make are made. So this is the storage rack. This is where the queue of upcoming content kind of sits as well as stuff that uh, we haven't or that we have already done. So this is here. This thing keeps getting opened. This is the Lumia. I'm pretty sure it's Terran who keeps opening it because he's all like Book of Spells! Like going all LARP on it. And I'm just like, no, that's not what it's for. It's a lamp, not a LARP. Anyway, uh, so this is our rubber mallet that we used to recently assemble all of these shelves. Um, this, is, this is where I store my personal crap that I don't have room for at my house because that's what being a boss is all about. It's a racing wheel. I don't think anyone's going to complain. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So this is the regular unboxing set. So you guys normally see it from this angle. So why don't we, why don't we do it from the other angle instead, right? So this is our special table that's actually called a vert desk. We, uh, we told vert desk, they sent us not only this one, which they sent us quite some time ago, but they sent us another one if we promise to explain how we use it for shooting. This makes our lives so much easier because instead of adjusting a tripod or adjusting a slider, which I think Brandon's actually setting up right now, you know, where it's like, undo this stupid thing and then undo this other stupid, ridiculous oh, thing. Stupid. They are stupid compared to the vert desk. <laughs> So now we have vert desks instead, so we can just be like, oh yeah, okay, we need to slightly adjust the height depending on the size of the product or the size of the host, for example, and boom, done. They hold like 300 pounds. Uh, over here is some, some more pending stuff. So this is stuff that I'm expecting to have to deal with pretty much immediately. Stuff like Corsair's upcoming AX1500i video and like, oh yeah, pretty stoked on this one. ASUS's WSC97 board, all about them WS boards. This is my garbage can that I made out of a cardboard box. Uh, these are our fancy lights that we've actually had for a long time. This is the Brandon shelf. So Howard's up there, and then uh, things like his extra cameras that he insists that we have, just in case he needs them. Uh, actually, it's for like uh, commercial shoots and stuff. This is a Blackmagic cinema camera. So, uh, I, you know, it's funny, I've lost all perspective for how much things cost. I would have looked at a Blackmagic cinema camera back when we started this whole enterprise and gone, holy balls, that's way too expensive. And then now with how expensive all the other production equipment we have is, I just kind of go, okay, that's like an extra camera. Here, so, okay, so to put this in perspective, this is our main camera rig. So this is a Sony FS700, which is about a seven and a half thousand dollar camera now, I think. This lens is another 800 or so. That's some Tamron thing that uh, Brandon has a hard on for. He owns one himself and still insisted that I buy one so he could use it. This is a Convergent Design Odyssey 7Q. So this will allow us to record 4K ProRes or even 4K RAW in the future. But right now we're able to record 4K but down sample to 1080p ProRes. So that's the improved sharpness that you've seen in our videos over the last little while. It's a few grand for one of those, including the proprietary SSDs that go in it. So it's just, all this stuff is like so unbelievably expensive that uh, like you guys just have no idea what it takes to make like really high quality videos. Well, I guess you do now because you're watching. Uh, this is our green screen. So this is where we shoot fast as possible. It used to be on like a self-constructed white wall that I built in my garage, but we found an actual green screen is much more effective. These lights are our old lights. So we just use them to illuminate the green screen. They actually have these, check out these like janky plastic color, well, whatever, they're in there. Bl janky plastic color changer things in there. Uh, I wanna get new lights and I wanna have them ceiling mounted. So the idea will be that you wire them all up to one switch, just kind of go, boom, and then we're ready to shoot as fast as possible because the amount of time that we waste dinking around with getting the lights positioned and then fixing it in post-production is just not worth it. Uh, here's where the Stormtrooper lives until I get around to dressing up the mannequin. And then this is the networking hub, which I probably shouldn't even show anyone because of how brutal it is. So here's the fiber box, here's the cable box, here's like all the routers that we were using to diagnose something. Here, we were gonna build a PFSense machine with this, but then we just, we just bailed. So there you go. 
Uh, this is what we use for our voiceovers. So I've actually done an unboxing of this. This is the Editor's Keys uh, SL300 mic, and then the little vocal studio booth thing is absolutely fantastic. Over in the kitchen here, Brandon is, you, I guess you're, you're seeing what the process is for B-roll. So, you know, a lot of work goes into getting things all, you know, set up and shot. It's funny, if you come over here behind, you can see that things aren't quite as tidy as they at first appeared to be. So here's like a slate and gaff tape and Brandon's like, you know, panini maker. <laughs> Cause like, whatever, that's a thing normal people bring to work. And then I keep telling people, please do, why are there dishes in the sink? If you have dishes at work, you clean them and you take them home. But for some reason we end up with dishes here. I don't quite understand it. Uh, back here, we've got all the stuff for a build guide that we're working on filming right in here. This is the cardboard pile. This is actually a real problem around here is what to do with all of the cardboard that things come shipped in. Like we don't know how to address this problem because we're, we don't exactly have like a commercial sized dumpster out in the back yard or anything. Um, I think that's mostly it for the, uh, for the, f oh yes, right. The bathroom. And here it is, the most frustrating room in the entire building because I'm the only one who cleans it. And as you can tell, it's not like that often. And people just do the most, the most sort of strange things. Like why do people put toilet paper in a can that is literally right next to a toilet where they would have the opportunity to flush it instead of me having to deal with it? It's not me, I would have to assume blowing their nose when they're not going to wash it. Well, they should blow their nose and put it in there. So you'd rather them flush it? Yes. If they weren't going to the washroom. Yes. Isn't that terrible for the environment? Well, anyway, uh, the point of this is Dollar Shave Club, our sponsor for this video. Dollar Shave Club ships you high quality razors, handles, and other bathroom supplies directly to your door to save you the hassle and money involved with going to the store, fighting with someone to go and unlock the safe to pull out some more razors, and then waiting in line or going through the cell checkout which if you've ever gone to the one at Home Depot it never actually works like have you ever successfully made it through the self checkout at Home Depot I swear you scan one thing and it's like boop please wait for attendant like, the chick doesn't even wait she like, just walks over immediately when you show up to help you Anyway, Home Depot self-checkout aside, Dollar Shave Club razors are high quality and cost a fraction as much as the ones that you buy at the store because they don't include any of the unnecessary BS frills and gimmicks that those ones do, like vibrating handles that have actually been demonstrated to not actually do anything in any way that can actually be proven. They are available in the United States, Canada, and Australia, and for an under $10 a month, you can even get their executive deluxe six blade razor shipped to you once every month so that you're going to have a fresh blade one for every week of the month so you don't have to choose between the options of dragging a rusty nail across your face like he was doing before we got some dollar shave club supplies Way to go, man. Uh, or, you know, fighting with traffic to go out and get some razors when you just want to get a nice clean shave. They've also got other products as well, including Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter, which goes on clear so you can actually see what you're doing, softens up the hair, just basically does what it's supposed to do and smells nice, which I consider to be an excellent bonus. And another thing that also smells nice and has additional functionality is One Wipe Charlie's. You can see where these were positioned in the bathroom right next to the toilet, which should give you some idea what One Wipe Charlie's are used for punishing employees, actually for wiping your butt. Anyway, let's continue with our tour and head on upstairs. Thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video on Linus Tech Tips. Guys, head over to dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus and join the club if you wanna start saving your time and saving your money. Actually, we missed a couple things on the stairs here. That's the water cooling supplies for an upcoming build guide. <laughs> There's a quadro for some reason. I'm actually not sure why that's there. Um, there, I don't know what those are. <laughs> All right. So up here is the legendary. Okay. So here's the stuff from last week's garage sale that I'm going to ship out. This is the executive bathroom that no one uses because no one here is an executive. I, I believe in a very flat, you know, um, organizational structure. Uh, this is the water cooling closet. So, uh, this is the, uh, this is the container that we use for, <laughs> Spraying naughty employee. I mean, 
This is the container we use for filling up reservoirs and stuff like, sorry, it was tempting. I don't know how long that water's been in there. Um, we've got a whole whack ton of radiators up here, so many that this thing is actually flexing. Here's the tubing bucket. So we got all the tubing and the crabs in that bucket. Then we've also got fittings, a bunch of like really old water cooling crap from like my house, uh, more radiators. Um, more like random widgets and like blocks and pumps and stuff. And then down here is all the supplies from my old chiller. So this could be used to make a sub-zero cooler. You can get a CPU down to around minus 25 or so with that, but you gotta actually put it together. And then the WAN showroom. So actually this, oh, that's how it's gonna be. All right, I guess I deserve that. So this room, um, I have already set up my whole system with the one button. Boop, and the WAN showroom is lit, just like that, so easy. Uh, also in the WAN showroom is our Steel Series set, so this is where we shoot our Steel Series tech, tech quickie videos. And then over here is the random pile of stuff that has gradually reduced in size. I mean, some of it's like collapsed, like if you look back here, I don't even know what's up with some of this stuff. Like there's toilet paper rolls back here, probably because I switched to One Wipe Charlies. Um, there's also like, you know, guns and stuff, you know? Uh, these are just BB guns, by the way. They're not actually, they're not actually weapons. Um, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, let's see, what else we got in here? This is the CRT that we used to play games on the after party on back when we had one of those. And then that's another Blackmagic cinema camera. So that's why the WAN show went from um, looking like kind of poop to looking freaking pretty good. And then the lighting was what made a big difference in terms of the consistency of the show. Because I would look at the thumbnails and I'd be like, okay, it looks good, and it looks good, but they're completely different types of good, so... Uh, this is our sound setup that unfortunately no one here other than Edsel really knows how to use. So this is a compressor, this is a mixer, and then the, the problem is that we don't have the cables to something. Anyway, that's why it's always quiet, but that's also why when I talk really loud it doesn't just peak immediately or clip, or whichever one is the one for sound, not video. This is the wardrobe closet. So this is where uh, Slender Man lives uh, until I dress him in his Stormtrooper armor. This is uh, Gil's outfit from the Funk commercials. Here's our ninja suits from uh, that Be Quiet commercial. Here's an NCIX PC t-shirt for some reason. Um, I don't know, man. Not sure what to say. And then this is where most of the real work gets done. So our team members, in order of appearance, are Edsel Iago, Brandon Lee, Taryn Van Hemert, and then finally, someone you've never met before, this is Mr. Nick Light. That's hurtful. Man. So he is the one who was responsible for that recent Fast as Possible that had no ad integration on it. <laughs> this is our sales and advertising coordinator, whereas uh, Taryn does some script writing, some producing, some video editing, and even some on-screen hosting. Brandon, you guys, and, and Edsel, you guys are probably mostly familiar with, but they specialize in filming, editing. Um, Ed actually doesn't do much filming anymore. I'm not even sure if he still remembers how to use a camera, but uh, he does most of our color, sound, and post-production work and all that good stuff. And then uh, I, I'm not sure what I do around here. This is the old gear closet, which has now, because Nick's desk is in the way of it, has been turned into kind of long-term storage. So boxes for things that we might need to return at some point if it's you know broken or whatever. My monitor that I really want to switch back to, this is that LG 21 by nine monitor, but I'm reviewing a monitor right now that's on my desk. So I need to like deal with that. Um, actually here, I guess I might as well show you guys my desk while I'm at it. So this is my office with a window, you know, got my window here. I share the window, mind you, but I share the office too, but whatever. Um, this is my computer that has no side panel, as some people observed in a picture I took a little while ago. This is a BenQ 32-inch 2560 by 1440 monitor that I'm taking for a test drive right now. This is my water bottle. Uh, this is, huh, this is kind of funny. This is the random RAID card and 10 gig Ethernet, or not Ethernet, uh, LAN card that I've had uh, on my desk that I don't really know what to do with for a while. It's like funny. This is my phone stand. Check it out. It's from Cooler Master. Luke thinks they're stupid, but I disagree because now I can see my notifications without even, without even glancing at my smartwatch. Before I glance at my smartwatch, I can see things. This I probably don't even want to show you guys, but this is sort of the server room, I guess. It's also sort of a bathroom. No one is allowed to use this bathroom. So I can walk you guys through a little bit of how the workflow goes in here. So we have our scanner and printer. 
Uh, we have storage that goes in the bathtub. Um, this is our fireproof NAS down here that I haven't actually deployed, but I should probably do something with at some point. This is our archive. So this is where anything that's no longer being stored on the RAID array in the NAS very goes safe. on WD. Sorry? Very safe. Yeah, very safe. Yeah, following all the best practices. It's like the, it, there's it, do as I say, not as I do. This room, no one should do anything. You know what my favorite part is? Like this. The water's on. I'm not going to turn it. Yeah, but no like, one should turn it. He didn't cut the water to no the bathroom. No one should turn it. Both the toilet and the sink actually work right now. So like if something bumps the faucet. Well, you shouldn't bump that. I should be the only one allowed in this room. Anyway. Um, also, so he thinks that is a proper way to archive drives. I don't think Look at it's this proper. Guy. Look at this guy. It's not proper. I know it isn't proper. The point is that's where they are. No one touch them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in, here's our switch. Uh, this is mostly gigabit, but also 10 gigabit. So there's a 10 gigabit link to our server that also runs to Edsel's machine, since he's the one who, back when we set this up, who was doing most of the very high bitrate content editing. This is our Netgear storage appliance that we use as an iSCSI drive so that Luke can install all of his games on a network drive whenever he's benchmarking, rather than install them locally and have to re-image those all the time. Down here is the main server. So this is running a Xeon processor with some Intel board that has Thunderbolt. We are using a consumer grade board so that we can use Thunderbolt for ingesting footage. It's got, I think it's like 10 or 11 drives in it that are running in a RAID 6 right now. So those are all three terabyte drives. Now that we're shooting ProRes, I'm, I'm having to archive things a lot more often and it's getting kind of crazy in terms of our storage needs. We're going to need to readdress this sometime soon, whether it's with FreeNAS or another solution. But for the time being, uh, that's how everything runs. Uh, we copy footage off of it. Here's those proprietary SSDs I was talking to you guys about. These things are so expensive, They're like unbelievable. So we use this Thunderbolt dock right here for copying um, very, very large files. And then we have this one right here for copying anything that's like um, moving, moving archival footage onto greens, for example, or just if the Thunderbolt dock is in use for whatever reason. Uh, now let's move over into Luke's area. Oh. So this is where most of the benchmarking happens. Uh, there's the closet here, which is overflow storage for things like the copious amounts of RAM. Hey, there's your stick. No, it's... Oh. There's one, the, the other two are in this system. And, and you missed an opportunity. I said, there's your stick, and you didn't, <laughs> you know, sue me for harassment. Um, so uh, this is a recent addition. Luke finally got a nice rack <laughs> for his room. <laughs> Uh, where most of the storage is done. It used to be kind of all over the floor, but things are much, much tidier now. It's kind of easier for everyone to work lately. So this is where all the graphics cards or anything that he's about to be working on go. Uh, this is for an upcoming case review. I know we're a little late on the 230T from Corsair, but we're finally getting around to it now. So uh, Luke just did the build on that. I got to script it still, and we're probably going to film that a little bit later. Um, this is where the test benches go. We've actually got... Oh, you put the new leg in. Yeah. So this is funny. Oh, it's not... <laughs> Okay. No, because it has different screws. Put the new leg in. It has different screws. It's like, actually a problem. Anyway. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. You just, they're not threaded. You just I go. know, I know. Oh, well, at any rate. Um, <laughs> so this is, uh, so here, you should go back so that they can see the curve of this table. Oh. Like the bowing that's going on with this table. So we finally got a, uh, a fifth leg to kind of prop up the middle of it. And then we want to get a thing down here that's actually going to be built on this piece of wood so that we can um, so that we can put the test benches down here and free up some more space on the top. So there's lots more things to continue to do, which I guess leads us to the overflow storage where we have things like city cones. This is your doing, isn't it? What do you know about this? Why do Nothing. we have a Shaw cable cone? I have no idea. I bet you know. Nope. Anyway, uh, so like leaves for like a table that's here because I don't have room for it at my house. The, the couch master because that's where I think most bulky stuff like this that people buy on an impulse and then can't figure out where to put ends up. Uh, and then this. Most of these boxes are actually empty. So there you go. Read into that whatever you will, but this is where all the cases or the boxes for cases that we don't know, like that we have deployed, but we still want to have the boxes just in case are, and like this mini fridge and that table that's hiding under a bunch of the boxes. So this is where all the overflow storage is. And I think that's pretty much it. 
Thank you for coming along for our little interactive tour of the Linus Media Group studio. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, share it if you know someone who also cares about what goes on behind the scenes over here. And then, uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.